So in this short video, I want to show you the new best way to use ChatGPT for qualitative data analysis. As you know, I've done that before. I have several videos about it. I have a whole ebook about how to use ChatGPT for qualitative data analysis or thematic analysis and coding. However, there's been some updates and now it seems that there is an even better way. This time, instead of combining uh, ChatGPT with Microsoft Word, we'll be combining ChatGPT with Microsoft Excel. And don't worry if you don't know how to use it. I am completely useless when it comes uh, to Excel. However, ChatGPT will be creating the files for us. So we literally don't have to use Excel at all. However, by combining it with Excel, the analysis becomes more rigorous and more accurate and the findings more credible. Now, just so you know, I've also updated the ebook now. So the new updated edition, 2025 edition, has uh, these sections about uh, how to use Excel. So, so everything I describe in this video. So just very quickly before I start, if you haven't been here before, if you haven't seen my other videos, uh, although I do recommend that you watch these videos first, very briefly, just in a nutshell, I do need to explain. Uh, to make uh, this analysis uh, professional or credible, the findings credible specifically, we always have to code the data. So that's something I've been saying uh, over and over again. So you have all these uh, AI tools and my main criticism has always been that they will give you the result, they will give you the themes, but without uh, the coding, without the process for how it got to these themes. And without such audit trail, the analysis is simply useless. It's lit literally useless, you can't use it, it's not convincing and it's not credible because you don't know how it got their codes or everything in qualitative data analysis and that's, like I said, that's been the main issue, the main problem with AI tools, because you always have to start with coding. You have to break the data down. You have to have these building blocks uh, for the analysis, the foundation for the analysis, which are the codes. And this has always been the main thing uh, when trying to use these tools or ChatGPT for data analysis. The main uh, problem or my main task was always trying to establish how do I get it to create these codes. So as you know, in that ebook, again, I, I showed how to do it and I involved Microsoft Word and a little bit of copying and pasting between the files. And essentially what we'll do uh, this time is very similar, but just uh, quicker, better and more accurate. So you can see on my screen now uh, roughly what I did. So I do have, as always, I start with this prompt where I explain firstly what this is and I explain what I want from it. So so specifically uh, how I want it to code it. So I say uh, you, you need to code it with what I call initial codes. I explained that I talked about it before because it remembers. But if, if it doesn't, if it's the first time that you talk to it about it, just explain what initial codes are. So I said it's uh, they are detailed descriptive codes. They cover almost everything, every statement or sentence in this data. And they do not attempt to speculate about the themes just yet. That's very important because ChatGPT will want to, to take that shortcut. It will be more than happy to give you the themes. And that's exactly what I don't want at this stage. I just want uh, to create these initial codes. Uh, so I am just explaining that they will later help me remember what the data is about. So again, to give it an idea for how detailed I want these codes to be, how descriptive, again, you know that I like descriptive codes and detailed codes and without any interpretation, just something that's pretty factual and descriptive. And then I explained that I want uh, it to create an Excel file where there's a table with interview text in the left-hand side column and then the detailed initial codes uh, corresponding to that text in the right-hand side column. Then I pasted the transcript, so it's a transcript, it's just an example uh, hypothetical study of a school leadership and how leaders uh, can turn things around in a school. Uh, so there is this this whole transcript and eventually, so what it did, it created this uh, this Excel file. So that's that's a big change. That's a big. I don't really like to to use the word game changer, but it's a big game changer. <laughs> it's a big game changer since uh, ChatGPT has this ability now to create files. It wasn't always this way. Now it can create this file. Uh, and that's what it did. And the file basically looks uh, like this. So it's a bit messy here. But if we just move this, we can see that we do have text on the left, and we do have the initial codes on the right. If you want to change anything, you can obviously you can uh, adjust it, you can talk to it, you can explain how you want you want to change. These codes are not perfect, not absolutely perfect, because it still has things like prompt about stuff turnover, I don't really need codes for interview worse questions, but it's fine, it doesn't do any harm. So why not? But the main thing is that they are descriptive, and they are detailed, and I really love it. So what I do then I uh, paste another one. So basically, now time to do interview two. So perfect. Now, please do the same with the following transcript, I paste in another one. And again, 
it gave me a uh, same sort of a, an Excel file. This one was a little bit shorter because the interview was shorter as well. I did create these interviews also <laughs> with ChatGPT in the first place, just to have some example data and obviously not to use real data that I'm working on. But the point is, uh, it gave me the same sort of a file. You can see it here. And again, I do need to just adjust it slightly. If it was longer, it would be longer, no problem. I, I've used it on actual data and it did create uh, loads of code. So now we go back to uh, ChatGPT. And now what happens next, again, without making this video too long, but this is initial coding. So we continue with uh, with the subsequent interview transcripts. We just want to, to create these, these codes, these transcripts. Sorry, we don't want to create transcripts, but we want to code the transcripts. So if you have five, if you have seven, whatever it is, you just keep uh, repeating this process. And then once you're done, you're ready to move on to uh, stage two, focus coding. Again, if you don't know, know what it is, just watch the video. I'll put it on the screen now where I explain these stages. And again, it's something that I do go into much detail uh, in that ebook. It's super cheap. It literally, it is cheap. So just have a look if, if you're interested and perhaps con uh, consider uh, buying it. This way you support me. And also I do believe it's a very, very good uh, material. But long story short, you are now in stage two. So you've done this coding, you want to do focus coding, you want to organize the code, still not thinking about the themes. And now, as I explained in, in the book, uh, there are different scenarios depending on how much control you want to have. Ideally, I do like to have control over this process. So I would take all these codes now that it's generating. So the right hand side column, all these files, I would throw them into one file and just start experimenting and looking and moving things around, basically trying to organize these codes into something that gives me a nice idea of what I have in the data. But then if you want to be a bit lazy about it, you can also still involve ChatGPT. And that's what I did here for this uh, presentation. So basically now what I've done, uh, don't mind the, the, the little previews, it just does it when, when you attach the files. Uh, so I attached, attached these files that it created for me and now I said, I want you to do something different because it keeps asking if you want to, if you want me to code more. Uh, I said, I'll upload these two transcripts or whatever the number is for you. Um, and now I want you to take all these codes and organize them to groups to, to sort them out basically. And I'm, I'm saying they can be anything, anything, uh, as long as they are organized thematically. So, so something, they have something in common, any number of groups, as long as every code belongs somewhere, that's important. You have to talk to it like it's, it's really stupid. Uh, so every code that's important. You have to use every code because I want to know where every code belongs, even if that means creating groups like other codes, but I do want every single code from that list to belong somewhere. So that's my prompt and you can see what happens here. So basically these are all the weird framing, uh, and prompting codes because it did code a lot of interviewer. Uh, input, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't really bother me. I don't need all of that, but we have leadership strategies and philosophy. So these are the codes. You can see the codes that the same wording, the same codes, that's important that it used in the initial coding sa stage, school conditional arrival, student related observation strategies, engagement, parent community engagement. So lots of things, culture change process, because that's what the interviews were about. So you can, it's good. It's good. It organized all these codes. And if you watch my content, you know that I, I like to compare this stage to creating a table of contents of my data. That's the key point. I want to know exactly what's in my data. And it's just better to, to know and easier to know if the codes are organized, they're not just long list of codes. And it did very well here. So what would follow from this again, I just wanted you to sh uh, to see that that way how to involve uh, this Excel, uh, Excel method. Uh, not the whole process, but basically what would follow from this, I want to develop themes, I want to really understand my data. And again, I would uh, very much rather uh, do it myself. So I don't want to involve at this stage, I don't want to involve uh, ChatGPT, even if I involve it up to this stage. So from this, I would start looking at this data, at these codes and really looking at my research questions, trying to decide how do I organize it? What kind of themes can I see that answer my research questions? Again, won't go into detail uh, of that process. You can involve ChatGPT again, but I, I would probably discourage you from doing, uh, doing that. You do want to have some control over your data, but I do think it's an amazing thing that you can now uh, do what I just showed you. You can ask it to create these initial codes to save yourself uh, yourself at least some time even if you did some of the initial coding yourself maybe you can you can even upload it as an example and then uh, and then upload these remaining interview transcripts so this is it i do hope that you learned something new if you did uh, please like the video it really helps me it really helps others 
find it it helps youtube know that this is important and useful content so i would really appreciate if you click on that like button and also consider subscribing if you're new around here